What is up, ladies and gentlemen? We are back for the third and final installment of Book vs. Movie Hunger Games Edition. We are down to the Mockingjay Book vs. Movie. That's not better, never mind. One of the questions that Alex asked me to consider as we watched The Mockingjay Parts 1 and 2 was, did this need to be split into two movies, or were they following the example of Harry Potter and, you know, grabbing for a little bit more cash? I'm gonna say right now, I'm a book purist. And that is partly why, in this case, yet again, the book is going to win this book versus movie discussion for me. I actually really liked them splitting it into two movies. I thought that really lent, lent itself to the emotional beats of the movie. Like part one really built up Katniss's desire to see Peter rescued and restored. And when part one ends with that absolutely shocking moment when he tries to murder her instead, then that really sets up for part two the question of can they heal from what they've been through? And I think that is the overarching theme of the third part of the of the uh, Hunger Games trilogy, the question of can Katniss find healing after all that she's suffered through in the various Hunger Games that she's been a part of. Um, one thing on rereading the book that, frankly, I didn't appreciate this the first time through when I read Mockingjay, and I appreciated it quite a lot when I understood it this time, is that it really is the Hunger Games for the third time with this movie. Book one was obviously the original Hunger Games. Book two is the shocking quarter quell in which the victors are reaped and the victors are forced into the arena again. And book three, when they storm the capital, the book very explicitly lays it out as this is an arena. And in the book, Finnick makes a joke like, may the odds be ever in your favor. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the 76th Hunger Games. That makes the connection very explicit, which, you know, Good on Suzanne Collins. That was a really good... Suzanne Collins is a fabulous grasp of continuity that I just really appreciated when I was rereading the books. And I think that um, playing the third book as the last of the Hunger Games really does sell that point. So this is book versus movie, not, you know, analyze what makes Suzanne Collins a really amazing writer. So we're going to focus. So book versus movie, I've already said, I think the book wins because the books allow for a depth of world building and detail that you simply don't have space for in the movies. That said, I think Mockingjay parts one and two was a really fantastic adaptation. And I think they did a very, very good job of translating a lot of the source material. Some of the pros, they used a lot of dialogue straight from the books, which I deeply appreciated. Told you, I'm a purist. <laughs> I, I love Sam Claflin as Finnick Odair. I think that he really nails that character, and I think that he conveys both the charm and the vulnerability and the PTSD very well. Um, Mahershala Ali as Boggs, like, you just trust him. He's just, like, so obviously just a good, solid dude. Like, I, I really liked Boggs a lot. Um, I think they really did a good job just with the things that they changed worked very well, and I liked that. I would say took notes. In the book, it is Katniss's prep team, who have been with her through all three books, who are brought in to turn her into the Mockingjay for Coin's propaganda campaign. In the movie, they bring Effie Trinket in. Effie did not show up in the book until the very, very end of the book, after they've liberated the capital, and I liked their decision to bring her back in the third movie. I thought it provided a good sense of, like, full circle. To the, um, to the story, you know, like it's the original four, Hamish, Effie, Katniss, and Peeta that are brought back together for this. I thought like the whole sequence where they're taking the capital back, obviously everything feels compressed. In the book, everything clearly takes place over months and weeks, and the sense of time is a little distorted because Katniss spends a lot of time in the hospital. In the movie, it feels much more like it takes place over days but I also think they handled condensing the storylines very well. I also really like the Hanging Tree song. That apparently actually is Jennifer Lawrence singing, and I think that she's a very lovely voice. Um, nice alto. I think their use of turning the Hanging Tree into an anthem for the Rebels was absolutely haunting and lovely, and I think that it really played well to like a lot of music throughout history. Particularly, like, I, I grew up listening to a lot of Civil War songs, so the American Civil War, 
and I liked their use of that song. I liked all the rebels singing it together. In the book, the song kind of haunts Katniss as she thinks of the diff of the morbid lyrics and how it applies to her various situations, turning it into this rallying cry in the movie. Provided her some really cool shots, so let's be real. I am a sucker for a really cool shot. I The District 8 scene was fantastic. That was like spot on to the book. And also like one thing that the movie could do that the book could not is that when the Capitol bombs the hospital, the music that plays is the same music that played when Katniss visited what remained of District 12, what was once her home. And just that musical cue to this is the aftermath of what the Capitol does was really, really good. Uh, PETA was fantastic. Like you see like his slow digression over the various interviews that he's doing for the Capitol until by the time they rescue him, like, I don't know what they did to Josh Hutcherson and I sincerely hope they did not, that he didn't have to lose weight or anything, but that boy looked like he was going to die. That, that was, I'm hoping that's just really good makeup because that, that was concerning. There's a lot of disability in this movie and I, I, it, it's, it's just, I really liked it. You had BT in the wheelchair. You had Fennec with his PTSD. You had uh, Castor and Pollux. One of the brothers is mute and the brothers communicate with sign language. And I really loved their inclusion of that. So that was, that was just like very good, very good across the board. What are things that I would say, I kind of feel like the movie could have done better. I think they did not do justice to Fennec Odier. This is not just because he's my favorite character. In the book, he provides emotional support for Katniss that undercuts her growing distance from Gale. And he also has like a lot of really funny lines that just, it makes him very endearing and makes his uh, eventual fate that much more heart-wrenching. I would have loved to see more of that. I think one of the places they could have showcased it most effectively is when District 13 is sheltering from the Capitol's raid, Katniss goes over and talks to Fennec and get some advice from him. In the book, at that point, Fennec gave her a piece of rope and told her that he ties knots in it to help manage his PTSD. And from then on, at various points in the book, P uh, Katniss will practice tying knots in her rope. I, there was no reason to cut that out. Like, you see Fennec tying the rope, so why not have that extra moment of connection, that, that little moment of kindness when he gives her the rope and says, hey, try this, it helps me. I think it was really sweet. I think it would have tied thematically in well also because at the beginning of the movie you hear Katniss repeating to herself the things that she knows are true. My name is Katniss Everdeen. I'm from District 12. Starts reciting, this is my mother, this is my sister, I survived the Hunger Games. When you see Peta later in the movie, you can hear him muttering to himself, my name is Peta Malark, I'm from District 12. And he's clearly using the same coping mechanism that Katniss was taught, which fabulous touch of continuity. And I feel like it would have heightened the coping mechanisms that the victors are trying to use if we could have seen Katniss tying the knots in the rope. It's a stupid little detail, but I missed it. This was a good thing. I think also, like, yeah, like, the movie gave, like, Gail all the emotional support, gave Effie, like, all the quippy one-liners that Fennec should have had, and Fennec deserved better. Um, the movie was oddly empty of people. In the book, uh, President Coyne has this council of advisors who accompany her. In the movie, Katniss walks in and it's just Coyne and Plutarch and like he's her right-hand man. Among other things, this makes Plutarch's managing to escape all the fallout at the end of the movie a little bit more puzzling. If he were Coyne's right-hand man, if he knew all the atrocities that Coyne permitted to happen in her quest to win the war, like. I feel like there should have been like a few more consequences for that guy. In the book, the fact that he was part of a council made it a little more believable that he could manage to squiggle out of any consequences for what he did. Besides that, in the book, Gale joins the weapons team and is part of Coin's inner council, which highlights how he's perpetuating the war and he is treating the war as this puzzle to be solved, this game to be won. Whereas Katniss has killed people, has seen suffering, has been through atrocities, and wants no part of it. And I read a fantastic post on Tumblr that was really analyzing uh, why the love triangle in the Hunger Games works so well. Because PETA chooses love. 
Peter chooses to stand for something greater than himself when he prioritizes Katniss's life over his own. Gail chooses to win the fight. Gail is angry. Gail chooses to battle and Gail escalates the war to a places that it really should not go. Like with this bomb that lures in the medics. It goes off, you injure a bunch of people, the medics come in, and then a second wave of bombs goes off, killing the medics. And both book and movie, Katniss is rightly horrified by this and points out to him that he's crossing a line with this bomb. And in the book, it was highlighted that he's determined to do whatever it takes. He will die. Like, he, he's perfectly willing to back this up with his life. In the movie, you kind of get the sense that it's less this fanatic burning desire to revenge himself on the capital and more a soldier's dutifulness. So I, I would have liked to see that highlighted. I think I got away from my original point. In the book, Gale's part of Coin's inner council. In the movie, there really was no council for him to be part of, so I rather missed that detail. We see a lot of scenes of President Snow calling shots, and a lot of his shots are just kind of like really bad ideas. And I think that goes back to catching fire when you see, when uh, Katniss sees the Capitol brutally put down District 11's moment of uh, solidarity. In the movie, they don't hide the brutality. And in the book, they do conceal it, and she sees it by accident and is shocked. So in the movie, Snow chooses to put down uprisings as brutally as possible. Um, he chooses to bomb the hospital. Like, you see all these decisions being made. He poisons one of his flunkies at a dinner for failing to kill Katniss Everdeen. And it's just kind of like, why didn't people rise up to kill you a long time ago? The, the books being told from Katniss's perspective don't show the inner workings of why Snow makes these decisions. And honestly, he's much more menacing in the book than he is in the movie. In the movies, his most menacing moments are when he's talking to Katniss one-on-one, -on -one, the scenes that are just taken from the book. I really would have preferred to see less of Snow and preserve that air of menace and that, oh my gosh, like, how does he know what he knows? Like, where is this coming from? I think, but I mean, it's the problem with casting big-name actors. You get somebody like Donald Sutherland, he's probably not going to want to do the 20 minutes of screen time just to be menacing with uh, Jennifer Lawrence. So, unfortunate, though I can kind of see where they're coming from. Cutting stuff like that would also have given space to show things like Katniss and Gale growing apart and really, like, let us into Katniss's emotional journey a little bit more. So there's the pros, there's the cons, and then there's the things that's like, it would have been nice to have this, I can understand why they didn't really go that route. They probably like just plain did not have time. I think I, I would have liked to have a few more people from District 12. There's this girl named Deli and this old woman named Greasy Say who are part of Katniss's circle of people that she knows. Um, at the end of the book, Greasy Say comes and keeps house for her while she's still recovering because otherwise she probably would not bother to eat at all. Greasy Say makes her eat and cleans her house for her. And this girl, Deli, is the familiar face from District 12 that goes to talk to Peta. Now, I think the movie did a really great job with substituting Prim for Deli, and I think that having that emotional tie worked very, very well. It just kind of goes back into that movie just feeling kind of empty of people and empty of connections. Like, she's got Hamish and she's got Peta, but beyond them, Katniss really does feel very alone in the movies. And in the books, she's got other people whom she knows, which feels more realistic to me. Which goes back to the book is better. It has space to be realistic. Um, I think Katniss... In the book, after Katniss has served her purpose as Mockingjay, Coin assigns her to the Star Squad as a sharpshooter. In the movie, Katniss escapes and kind of makes herself part of the squad. I feel like you could have played that a little closer to the book. I feel like it made Coin a little bit on the nose as a villain, but I'm not honestly too fussed about it. I think that it did play very well in the movie. And I think the last thing is that Jennifer Lawrence is a very beautiful woman. And book Katniss is really pretty dang banged up by everything that she goes through. I think it would have been cool to see like some scars on her arm and, you know, like at the end of the book, Katniss 
does not look good and the book does not shy away from the scars and the pain that she's been through so kind of would have liked to see a little bit more of that overall I think that Mockingjay and Catching Fire are two very very good adaptations of a very good book series the book series is going to win for me but if you don't have time or inclination to read the books by all means watch the movies I think the last thing that I would say is that the first movie was directed by uh, a totally different guy than the last two movies. It was Gary, what's his face? Gary Ross. Catching Fire and Mockingjay were directed by Francis Lawrence. I think it would have been interesting if the entire trilogy had been directed by Francis Lawrence. I would have liked to see what he did with uh, The Hunger Games Part 1. But that is something that probably happened in a different timeline, not this one. So next I think we're going to tackle The Lord of the Rings, which ought to be quite fun. That's one of my favorite series of all time. And after that, we're taking suggestions for whatever y'all want to hear me ramble about next. See you next time. Don't forget to like and subscribe, and we'll be back with more reviews.